Okay, now um, our topics, uh, we will start with HIV, uh, immunology, pathology, clinical HIV. It will be short videos in order, if anyone wants a specific topic, you can like pick it without pick it up without watching all the videos up to you now my uh, i think that the the most important lecture is today because it's the basis of the pathogenesis of hiv now now hiv you know human immunodeficiency syndrome uh we will talk about it in a separate video but i'm, I'm concerning today about the Receptor though. This is a separate video for the receptors because the receptors is important as I mentioned for the pathogenesis Now let's start talking about something known as chemokines receptors Now HIV is a very complex um, virus In order to enter inside the cell, it will need two doors two doors to open chemokines receptors and CD4 receptors so the chemokines receptors is divided into two, and it is clinically significant to understand the difference between the two uh, receptor, because basically uh, it has a clinically and resistant, like disease resistant, and the, I mean the disease itself. So let's start for the structure first of all. Now, here you can see it's G7. Now G7 is means that G protein coupled receptor. A G protein. Now, this picture just to illustrate, illustrate for you what is a G protein coupled receptor. G protein coupled receptor, you know, every receptor has signaling molecules, right? So, in this case, this receptor, this is the main one, okay, it has the G protein traction in the cytoplasmic domain. Now, remember that it is a transmembrane receptor because it is within the membrane it is a seven transmembrane receptor one two three four five six seven it has an extracellular domain transmembrane domain cytoplasmic domain which is coupled via the g protein interaction now it's important to understand that you have this nh2 terminal which is for the ligand binding and you have the COOH for the carboxyl and for the signaling, which is basically the G protein. Okay, I can see here G protein. All right, now this is the this is the structure of the chemokines receptor. Now chemokines receptor actually it's two. We have two type of chemokines receptor. Now this is if you are concerning with HIV, you just has to, you have to know this. That's it. This is. This is the receptor that I, I need you to understand. Why? Now, CCR5 and you have CXC4. CCR5, which is found in here, it is basically the one which will be dominant initially. What do I mean by this? Now, you know, HIV, if, if you have an HIV that is interacting with CCR5 in order to go inside the cell, basically, we will call it as M tropism. Now, M tropism means that uh, HIV, which is from the M tropism, that means that it needs CCR5 to go inside the CD4 cell, or it can go inside the macrophage. Now, you should know that most of the books say that CCR5 mainly it is like a chemokines, which is mainly found within the macrophage. Okay, it can be found in T cell, which is not activated, but in activated T cell, you will find CXCR4. Why you have to distinguish between them? Because if someone having a mutation within CCR5, he will not have HIV in his whole life. Why? Because in HIV, in order to go inside, now initially, the initial infection, there would be an emetropism, which is the HIV that needs CCR5 to go inside the cell. So even though if you are having the T-tropism, which is HIV that is using CXCR4, but you will not have HIV because initially, as I mentioned, the HIV has to contract with CCR5 in order to go inside your body. Okay, so that's why it's important to understand if someone having homozygous mutation, you will never have HIV. If someone have heterozygous mutation, you will have HIV, I mean, he will have uh, 
but it will be very slowly progressed disease. Okay, that's it. This is what you need to know. This is the clinically significant. Now, uh, so so this is the first one. So now we have to recap CCR5 found within the macrophage mainly and the not activated CD4. CXCR4, it is basically found where? It is found in the CD4 activated T cell. CCR5 is important initial infection in order to go and make the pathogenesis in your body. CXCR4 is important later on, okay? Later in the infection. That's why, that's why in HIV, we will, call, we will talk about it in pathology. In HIV, the, C, the, the CD4 cell initially, it's, it's a normal in number, but later on it will become less. Why? Because because now you, ha you now you will understand why. Because HIV later in the infection it will be T tropism. That means HIV a type is T tropism. That means it will use CXCR4. And we know CXCR4 is found in the CD4 cell, which is activated T cell. HIV if it's go inside the cell, it will lead to killing of the CD4. That's why later on in the infection you will have very low CD4 number. But initially, it's normal. Why? Because HIV will go inside the macrophage because it is a emetropositive type. That's it. This is the most important part you should understand. And that's it. Okay? Now, I didn't find any, any book that is mentioning that CXCR4, uh, if there's any mutation, it will lead to infection or not. But... From my conclusion, I think that CXCR4, um, like if you have a mutation, still you will have infection because C because uh, because HIV initially will infect CCR5. Later on, it will lead to infection to CXCR4. Okay, and uh, this is all about the chemokines receptor.